Hello, my name is Emily Perez, and my research question is, do higher cost high schools feed the students better than low cost? So first thing I want to start with a few definitions, such as what does it mean by feed the students better? Well, better basically means healthier. And since healthy has like different interpretations and meanings to them, in my research specifically, it means the well-being of both the mental and physical state. But I'll mostly be focusing on the physical condition of a student and how it contributes to mental state a little bit as well. And to keep a good physical state, one should balance their calories um, as well as keep it consistent throughout. It really just depends on your age and your gender and how you do it. And what does it mean by high and low cost high schools? So basically each school uh, pays a certain amount of money per each pupil or per each student and it just really differs on each high school and how much um, and what the spendings would be. So the gap that my research would be filling is that I would be looking at high schools specifically in the Houston area. So why I was interested in this was generally just out of curiosity and I was just wondering if there's like meals provide us with enough energy for just throughout the day or for us to like focus on our academics and then if they provide us with enough calories as well and really keep a student healthy throughout their high school years. And then the relevance and value of my project would be for students who are about to start high school and they want to know how they're going to be fed, people who want to keep a healthy diet, and parents who want to know how the child is going to be fed. So uh, the main goal is to look at the amount of money that the high school spends for each student and then compare most of the calories along with the ingredients and nutrients of each meals and see the effects that they have in the student's overall physical health. And then my hypothesis would be that I believe that higher cost high schools provide the students with more nutrition and more calories and the school meals are basically just part of keeping the student healthy. And then for my studies, every high school should include a meal program or the means of providing the food necessary which, uh, which would be made of breakfast and lunch. Every student participating in the program will receive a free or reduced priced lunch. And as I mentioned before, healthy means balancing your calories and keeping it consistent, but dietary varies in age and it depends on your gender and how active you are and your genes. Some major foods that the teens, teens need and that it contains of is uh, fruits, vegetables, proteins, fats, and a limited amount of sugary drinks. And milk has been a major contribution to the nutrients in the students' day in school, since you see, like, basically in every meal, even breakfast and lunch, there's milk provided in it. And this is because it helps with development and growth. So both breakfast and lunch contains the same food groups, which is uh, dairy, fruits, grain, and protein. And basically, here on the on the right is basically boys ages 16 through 18 and how many calories they should consume depending on how active they are. So if they're like active, it's about 3,200 calories, moderately active, 2,800 calories, and not active, 2,400 calories. And then here are for the girls ages 14 through 18, and if they're active, 2,400 calories, moderately active, 2,000 calories, and not active, 1,800 calories. So um, previously, like the equipment that I needed was uh, technology and a pen and paper. Because my previous um, my previous method was to contact the administrators and hopes to make a meeting either virtually or in person to ask some questions that I would have devised. So basically, would have asked what the meals consist of or like how many calories that they could they could like uh, give me the information, nutrients, ingredients that they have and basically if they believe that it keeps the student healthy. But due to COVID and busy schedules, I was able to make a meeting. So instead, I looked at each school's website and gathered my information from there. And then here are the three high schools that I chose. It's Jersey Village High School, which is a Cypress Fairbanks IZ district, North Houston Early College High School, which is an HISD district, and Victory Early College High School, which is an Aldine ISD district. And since they're like different di districts, they all pay a uh, different amount for their people. And then um, it's ethical because I'm not really causing any harm to anybody, I'm not falsifying any information, and now I'm gathering my data directly from the source. 
So when I collected my data, <clears throat> I looked at each website and they each contain this meal icon as you can see right here. And I clicked on that and it took me to this marketing system, which is School Cafe. This program is a school nutrition management for uh, grades K through 12. And they, it's, it's a food service provider for the United States. <clears throat> it helps, <clears throat> it helps uh, parents like check on their children's balance, or their purchases, their payments, and they can apply for free and reduce benefits as well. So in the picture right here on the right, it's uh, you can see is the homepage of the school cafe. And if you scroll down, you could put the state uh, that you're in and then along right there with the arrow, it says the school district. So then after that, it would take me to a page where I would then view uh, the school menu as a guest. And then here it's the basically the menu for like uh, the three days. I was looking specifically at February 2022. And each meal the type provides, like they have different food categories. And they have just a, such as fruits, milk, uh, meat or meal alternatives and grains, vegetables, condiments, and it will show uh, the nutrients of each food as well. As you can see, it has the calories, total fat, the carbs, and the sodium. And then here I put, I made a chart, created it that shows the amount of money, the money spent for each student and the estimate, the estimate amount of calories consumed on a day for both breakfast and lunch. In the month of February, this is just for like one day. And then it, it would include all the, car, all the food categories present. And in each category, you're only allowed to um, So um, basically in the results or my discussion is that uh, the higher cost high school, which was like Jersey Village, had a slightly higher calorie consumption than the rest of the students, than the rest of the schools, but and all the students consume about half or more of the calories needed to stay focused for the, for the morning and enough for most of the afternoon. And then my limitations would be that I was having a bit of complications in the beginning and I thought um, it would have been better if I did the meeting because I would have got like, more information about it, like I guess more accurate information about it. And then um, this also could not every student uh, grabs lunch or breakfast and if they do, they don't usually eat the whole meal. So in conclusion, they all feed about the same amount of calories for each student and there's like no big major difference on it. And um, further research, I'll be looking into like countries, like places outside of Houston, and if their meals are any different. Thank you. All right, so I do have three questions for you. Um, first question, how did your initial exploration of the scholarly conversation lead to your final research question? So I was looking into, um, <clears throat> firstly, I was looking into elder care. Um, so like basically uh, which nursing homes feed the elders better but then um, I noticed that it can be a risk due to COVID so I decided to move into like a place that was more easier to get information from and that was a school. All right. Let's see um, what are the real world implications or consequences related to your findings? So the real world implications. Could you repeat the question? What are the real world implications or consequences related to your findings? How could this be used? Okay, it can be used um, for, I mean, students that are coming in here, they could just see like how many calories they consume and <clears throat> the parents as well, if they wanna know like how their child is being fed, they could just um, look through the menu as well. Yeah. All right, and then finally, um, think back, no, let's see. If you could revisit your research process, what would you do differently and why? I think the differently I would do, maybe I just like adjust my question a little bit better. And then um, I would have maybe um, tried to uh, make a schedule at least with one of the schools and maybe get like a little bit more accurate information. And then from there, I think it would have been a little better, like the results would have been more accurate. 
and